Good morning, and as always, uh, once again, I appreciate uh, all of you taking your time to come out and help us disseminate it as much uh, current information as we possibly can and have. Uh, I have very little uh, once again today uh, regarding COVID. Uh, I think everybody's pretty well up to date on COVID these days. Um, but I do want to thank uh, last uh, a week ago, um, we made a plea or an ask of the community to give us some suggestions as to what we could do uh, to make your staycation or staying in Medicine Hat more enjoyable. And frankly, we uh, were actually overwhelmed with the response and, and, and positive comments uh, and, and good comments. And so we're just going through those right now. Uh, some examples were camping at Echo Dale, uh, bring back fireworks, of course, um, uh, drive-in movies and stuff. So we're actually evaluating all these suggestions and uh, we'll keep you informed and keep you uh, in touch. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. I will obviously uh, take, we had a council meeting last night with quite a few uh, uh, items on the agenda from credit card payments to uh, tax incentives and, and, and I'll be glad to answer any questions regarding the council meeting last night. So I just want to obviously say thank you as well to the uh, community, um, specifically around uh, playgrounds and the skate park. So as you're aware, we did reopen some of these structures. And I want to thank the community for actually really embracing this process. And so the compliance rates as it relates to this is, is really great. And so once again, I'd like to thank the community for this. Uh, I mean, just even for myself in my position, a, a very, very little issues associated with this. And so it, I see that the, the community is really embracing this, embracing this process. And so that's just another indicator from us as a, as a municipality and as a community as a whole as to, as to what we start reopening again. Um, we've been re receiving a number of questions regarding garage sales, um, and it's great that these questions are coming in, and rather than just going out and actually holding these garage sales. And so I just wanted to reiterate um, some of the things that I've mentioned in the past. And so we as a, as a municipality, we, we never said that um, or put an order in place uh, such as like a state of local emergency for that matter saying you can't have a garage sale because we always go back to the reliance on the fact of making these really good responsible decisions as members of the public. So I just want to go back to some of the statements that I made um, previously and the fact that it, it having a garage sale is not uh, having good responsible decision making abilities based on that so we'll go back to some of the you know some of the guidelines and some of the orders issued through Alberta Health Services regarding social distancing and 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 similar things like that and so it's still not recommended um, to do this and we we don't ever want to go down to the point where we're now enforcing or ordering um, not having a grad sale but I, I do want to rely on the community to to make those responsible decision making uh, similar to what is is occurring with skate parks and uh, the playground structures for that matter. So when it comes down to uh, some of the uh, preemptive flood uh, protection measure updates, so uh, to date we filled 18,000 sandbags, uh, so we're, we've concluded that uh, process uh, with the sandbag filling, so, we're, so we need approximately about 25,000 to be fully prepared for a flood, but we um, can fill those 7,000 or the remaining 7,000 at the time of the event, um, if there is an event, of course. Um, the Industrial Avenue uh, temporary measures have been completed, so that was completed last week, and the Harlow uh, temporary measures is um, uh, com completed today. Now, I just wanted to provide a little bit of an update on the river itself, and so we are going to see a bit of an increase, and we are actually seeing an increase right now. So just even this morning, we're sitting at a row, roughly around 680 cubic meters per second. So now we're sitting at 700 cubic meters per second, and so we're going to see a rise. So upstream of the South Saskatchewan River, which would be the uh, Bro River and the Old Man River, we are seeing an increase in flow rates in both of those, which will translate down to um, increase of flow rates in the South Saskatchewan River. So we had a little, little bit of rain in the mountains, and obviously with the, um, with the snowpack uh, melting, we're going to see an increase. However, this is what happens. This is what happens at this time of the year is we are going to see an increase. Now, um, comparing last year to this year, it's a little bit fluctuating a bit more when you're comparing year over year, but that's okay. I mean, some of these things will happen year over year as well. And so we are constantly monitoring and there's no um, um, a risk or threat right now of a flood. We're just starting to see these, these ebbs and flows of flow rates with a little bit of precipitation in the mountains. 
and um, some of the snow melt. And so I'll go back to 2013, and I, I mentioned actually this in, this in Open Council um, last night. And so in 2013, we had this, this, this storm cell that, that sat over the mountain range for days on end. And so when I say we are, we're having a little bit of precipitation in the mountains, this is for, you know, an hour, two hours, three hours. So it's, it's quite sporadic. So it's nothing like what we saw in 2013. Now, that doesn't say that we still can't have that in the next couple of weeks. But this is what we're seeing with the flow rates as it relates to the South Saskatchewan River right now. So a little bit of precipitation, a little bit of the snow melt, um, which... Uh, results in increased flow rates both in the Bull River and the Old Man which translates to uh, increased flow rates in the South Saskatchewan River. I mean I'm looking at it right now and it's, it's flowing higher than um, what it was last week and so it could go up even more from that but uh, no concern as to what we are at right now and we are constantly monitoring precipitation in the mountains, we are constantly monitoring snowpack mount, we are constantly monitoring the uh, flow rates uh, for any um, potential threat. No different than what Alberta Environment and Parks do. Yeah, so the question was with the uh, with the increases in flow rates, uh, so the ebbs and flows of these flow rates, are we um, uh, advising people to stay off the river at this point? And so I, th I believe that our fire services actually uh, spoke to the media last week and they advised, yes, to, to stay off the river um, without any um, so, sort of, um, so if you're looking at like kayaking and, um, you know, river floating and things like that, yeah, it's, it's, this is not a good idea. And so, yes, we're advising on that one. The question is, um, we, at Council last night, we presented the construction season and timelines. There were about 30 projects on that list. And is that above normal or, and I, th and that's, that's a good question because we have, that was the first time we had done uh, a presentation on the construction and the projects. And it did seem a little bit overwhelming that how much was going on. But you know what, it's probably a pretty average year to tell you the truth. And, um, you know, some years will be a bigger one, obviously, when we were doing downtowns and we do all of Second Street, or we, we were actually going to be doing, in the original plan, Third Street uh, this year. Um, but of course, that's been pushed back and pushed back because uh, the, uh, the underground uh, infrastructure is actually not in, it's, it's still in okay shape. But uh, I think that was a good uh, presentation as to that the city, as I've been saying, is trying to keep business as normal as possible in unusual times or, and because um, where a lot of communities have canceled, obviously, their, their municipal construction plans. Um, but, you know, and a good example, of course, is the FLC parking lot that we're, you know, paving, which has been on the books for quite some time and, and uh, a desire of the community since we did the expansion. And what a better time to do that paving than when the FLC is closed. So. No, I don't think it's much more than usual, but uh, I am proud of the fact that we, you're, and people always complain about construction, road construction, but be happy to live in a municipality that can actually afford to look after its infrastructure.